I felt my heart racing. The, the, the room felt like it was spinning. And I thought, I think I'm having a heart attack. And I was like, I started like kind of coughing and kind of playing it off. And it was scary. So I didn't know if something was like physically wrong with me. I didn't know it was anxiety at the time. I just thought, I thought I might have just had a, a heart attack. Hello everyone and welcome to Unscripted. My name is Desiree and I am the Young Adults Pastor here. And I am so excited because we have a very special guest with us today. We have our Associate Pastor, Pastor Lewis. Pastor Lewis, how are you doing today? I am excellent today, excited to be here. We're so excited that you're here. And like I said, you're the Associate Pastor here at Broadway. And I know that that's such a big job. It encompasses a lot of things, but I'm wondering before we get started, what is your favorite part about being the Associate Pastor here at Broadway? What are you most excited for when you see it on your schedule besides of course, meeting with me? <laughs> well, that's part of it actually. Uh, in my role uh, overseeing all the operations, I actually get to work with a lot of different people in a lot of the different departments. Uh, I, as I pictured, I'm kind of like a little bit of the oil that kind of keeps things from not squeaking, so to speak. So I get to meet with and 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 help plan and, and uh, strategize with a lot of ministry leaders. I think that's my favorite part. Well, that's yeah. awesome. And you're really good at it. So it makes sense that it is one of your favorite things. So something that we do here on Unscripted is we ask every single one of our guests, what is one fun fact about you that we wouldn't know until we had watched this? One fun fact um, was the reason I started growing a beard. Oh, okay. The reason I started growing a beard is because when I was about 18, 19 years old, I had lots of acne on my on my chin and my neck. And I thought, I need to hide this somehow. And I didn't want to go down the makeup route. So I went down the hair route and I started growing a beard and, and it worked. It kind of hit and, and I just, now I'm just lazy. Oh. <laughs> so if you want to hide your acne, grow a beard. Okay, that's some good, some good life hack advice like our new series. Well, thank you for sharing that. I definitely had no idea that's never come up in conversation. I don't know how many people know that actually. That's that's a very uh, uncommon thing for me to say. Well, now everybody knows it, so perfect. So as we are getting started, I'm wondering if you can share with us, what was your first experience with God? Well, I grew up uh, in a home. My, my dad escaped from Romania and came to Canada when he was about 19 years old. My mom immigrated to Canada from Italy. They came here, met each other here um, at actually an Italian speaking church, had a family. And when I was born, when I was a few years old, uh, they decided to start a Romanian speaking church um, for the Romanian community here in, in Vancouver in the lower mainland. And so I actually grew up going to that church. It was uh, three hours long services uh, on Sunday afternoon and I absolutely hated it. Um, it was this church my dad started. He was bivocational, so he was, you know, working during the day and, and running this church, you know, in the evenings and on the weekends. And, and I just, I really didn't like the church. It was good for the adults and the older people, but for the kids that didn't know Romanian very well, uh, honestly, it was just really boring for us. And so we pushed back a lot. Growing up, I pushed back so much. We had so many fights on Sunday about not wanting to go to church. Not that I didn't want to go to church. I actually wanted to go to church. I just didn't want to go to that church. Um, but I remember um, later on in my preteen and, and young teenage years, uh, we, we kind of started transitioning to another church. Um, and with that other church, we actually went to um, a conference called History Maker, which uh, we as a church go to that conference as well. Um, and I remember going there, um, I think it was in Kamloops that year. And that was the first time that I really connected with, with the preacher. And actually, I, I, I think I was 12, maybe 13 years old. And I remember going up to the front and kneeling down kind of like in the, in the, in the aisle there, it was this big stadium type thing. And I remember experiencing God there. Really, I think that was probably for the first time. Wow, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. It's pretty cool to hear some of your story. I actually didn't know that you grew up in a family that was running a church. So take me back, like you were grew up in the church and then you had this experience. And then how did you go from there to becoming Pastor Lewis, associate pastor to Broadway Church? Like what was that journey like for you? Yeah, so I grew up in this church that I didn't enjoy going to. Um, and then we eventually transitioned to a, another, an English speaking church where that's where I went to History Maker and all that. 
But really what happened was, and I know Pastor Simon talked about this, so I won't talk about it a lot, but there was a group of us in high school that met that we all kind of grew up in a similar situation where we grew up in homes where we didn't really enjoy going to the churches that we were going to. And so we decided to, to um, plant a church together called Youth Church, but I didn't really want to be the pastor there uh, or a pastor there. Uh, my goal was after high school, I was going to take a gap year and then I was going to go um, like every athlete wants to be, to be a PE teacher. <laughs> so that, that was my plan. But during my gap year, I actually was coaching at a public high school in Surrey. And uh, I remember coaching this team and I was like 18, 19 at the time. And I, I walked into this public high school and I said, hey, I'd like to be a, a coach. You know, what team do you have? And they said, oh, we have a senior girls basketball team. Oh, interesting. Okay, I'm like a year older than some of these girls. I was like, okay, that, whatever, that's fine. And so I started coaching this basketball team. And while coaching that team, God did something on my heart. I remember there was moments and times during that season where I would just break down crying and praying for these students that I was coaching and their friends. And, um, and I saw... I saw God working on their heart that so much so that five of those girls that I was coaching on that team actually ended up coming to church, to youth church, where Simon and I were, you know, helping run and, and, and all that. Five of them came to church and became Christians. Um, and so I actually got to experience, you know, this Buddhist girl, you know, uh, you know, turned to Christianity, this girl with no faith turned to Christianity. And working through, I remember sitting at the McDonald's in Guilford with a, a Bible open and, you know, trying to teach them a little bit about the Bible. And they're saying like, what's a Pharisee? You know, I'm like, oh, that's a good question. I just took that for granted. And so I saw how God transformed their lives. And literally from that point forward, I said, that's what I want to do with the rest of my life. I want to tell people about Jesus because I saw how life changing it was. And that sent me on a trajectory to, to planting, planting youth church. Um, and then, uh, we were planting youth church for a number of years. And, uh, there was a, there was a time in my life where, where I wasn't full-time pastoring. And, um, and actually I walked into Broadway church, our Vancouver campus here. And I was walking into the office to go talk to the receptionist about something. And, and I wasn't working here. I just knew people. And Steve Clifford, our facilities director here, he was sitting at, on his chair. And uh, I'd known Steve for many years because I, I went to school with his, with his daughter, Ashley, and, and we, were, we were friends. And he called me over and he said, hey, would you ever, uh, ever want to be a youth pastor here? I'm like, maybe, I don't know. Like, I'm kind of in between pastoral jobs at the moment. I said, sure, have Pastor Darren call me. And, a day later, two days later, Pastor Darren called me. We had a conversation and um, I really appreciated uh, the type of church Broadway was, how outreach focused it was, the fact that we do a salvation call every single week, how outreach focused it is. There was a lot of draws um, that I saw to Broadway, which I didn't see before. And so I, then I started at Broadway and that was 12 years ago now. Wow. Yeah. That's amazing. Yeah. It's really cool to hear your story because I think it can be really easy to look at you and be like, well, Pastor Lewis, you're the associate pastor of such a big church. But the origins of that really were a willing heart to coach a girl's uh, sports team and how God used that to bring you where you are today. So I think that's really encouraging. And there's a lot that we can glean from that. So you kind of mentioned this already in your uh, story that you had been doing a few different things, working in a few different places. But I'm wondering, what are some of the other jobs that you had before you decided to be a pastor or while you were being a pastor? Yeah, so uh, for some for some side income, um, I was uh, I was moving house like a moving truck I'm working for a moving truck company for a few months hated that. <laughs> uh, and, and what I, what I've done the most other than pastoring, uh, is installing tiles. Actually, my dad, um, is a tradesman. He installs tiles and I kind of grew up, uh, you know, during spring break and summer break going with him to install tiles. And I learned that trade. And so I, I've done many backsplashes and bathtub surrounds and kitchen floors and all that kind of stuff. So I still do it on the side, actually. Um, 
So that's that's the other other trade that I did. I work with it's not it's actually fun to work with your hands when you're working with people all the time because when you're working with people the job's never done. But when I install a backsplash I'm like that's it. I can leave now. Right. right. <laughs> and wash my hands and that's it. Right. Yeah. Well, cool. so kind of going, jumping back into your story, you're talking about how you grew up in a family uh, that was surrounded by church, right? And so I'm wondering, did that? How do you feel like that impacted you as a pastor today? Well, that's an interesting question, and it's interesting because you don't even know where I'm going to go with this answer. But uh, so my dad, being you know a, a pastor, a part-time pastor, he actually burnt out. Um, and I saw him burning the candles on both ends and, um, and I saw him working so hard at his job, doing manual labor tiles and working so hard at church and he just burnt out one year. Uh, I probably was 11 or 12 years old. And I remember I thought I'm never going to be a pastor. I actually said that to myself. Um, and my dad always told me, he said, listen, if you ever do be a pa become a pastor, and for whatever reason, he always planted, my mom and dad, they always planted that seed in my heart, my mind. He said, if you ever be a pastor, make sure you share the load. Always share the load. Don't burn out like I did. Don't burn out like I did. Don't try to do it all yourself. And I've always listened to that. And it's wise words because I can't do it alone. Um, and in fact, if I try to do it alone, I, it's not nearly as good as when I share the load. And so I think that I always had that thought in the back of my mind of maybe I could be a pastor. I don't know. Even though I, would, I felt like our family was kind of burnt by it growing up. Yeah. And I can see that even because you're the next gen director here. So I can see that in the way that our team runs. So that's pretty cool to see how uh, God has used that to shape our whole team here at Broadway. So thank you for sharing that about your dad. I'm wondering, I know you've been in ministry for more than 12 years. You've been here at Broadway, but for in ministry for much longer. Yeah. But I'm wondering if you don't mind sharing with us, what is some of the hardship that you have faced in your time and ministry or in life, something that you'd be willing to share with us? Yeah, um, I think the, the biggest thing, um, probably the biggest hardship that I faced, even though it probably happened over the last few years, to be honest with you, I shared this a little bit um, in a Sunday message that I spoke a few months back, um, but right at the beginning of the pandemic, um, I actually struggled with a lot of anxiety. Um, and I had never struggled with it before. Actually, looking back, I realized that I had, I just didn't know what it was. Um, but I had always kind of felt it a little bit in my life, but at the beginning of the pandemic, I don't looking back i'm like there wasn't anything that changed in my life i'm not honestly i'm not really sure what triggered it um but i remember one time in particular when it hit me the hardest and when it really shook shook me i was actually in front of a number of people and i was just like reading something off a board um and this level of anxiety rose up within me uh and i remember feeling it as I'm like reading this off the board and I'm thinking to myself, what is going on in my life? Just like, go away, please. But it didn't go away to the point where it, it rose so, so much in, in my, in my mind. And I was thinking about it and worrying about it that I felt like I was having a heart attack in that moment in front of those people. And I felt my heart racing. The, the, the room felt like it was spinning. And I thought, I think I'm having a heart attack. And I was like, I started like kind of coughing and kind of playing it off. And then I sat down and I was like, what just happened? Uh, and it was scary. I didn't know what happened. And I remember that shook me uh, that, that one day. And I was talking to a mentor of mine about it. And from that day, it, it, it had been happening almost on a daily basis for a couple weeks. And I talked to my mentor and I, and I, and I said, man, this is happening inside of me, this anxiety is rising up and I have no idea what's happening. I felt like I was having a heart attack. I shared with him and he said, listen, for the, for the sake of your family, uh, you should go get this tested. Like go get, you know, an ECG, get your heart tested and whatever, all this kind of stuff. He said, just go get it tested and see and, and go see a counselor, go talk to someone about it. And so, and so that's what I did. And so I didn't know if something was like physically wrong with me. I didn't know it was anxiety at the time. I just thought, 
I thought I might have just had a, a heart attack. <laughs> uh, I thought at, at, at least it was a panic attack. Um, and I found myself over the course of three or four months from the time that it happened, three or four months, that I would be in social settings and it would hit me. And I'd be worried that, you know, it would come to me and I would have to say something. And I'd be like, <sighs> and this thing would like rise up within me. And, I'm, and I was thinking, I thought, I'm a pastor. I speak for a living. I lead conversations for a living. I'm like, I don't know if I can do this anymore. Um, and I remember sharing with a small group uh, of people uh, that I had at the time. I said, it's almost like playing Russian roulette in a conversation where it's like, sometimes it'll come to me and I'll be fine. And sometimes I'm like, it just rises up and I don't know what to do. I can't handle it. Um, so anyways, I saw, I saw a doctor and they actually prescribed medicine. Um, some, um, some medicine that I take daily and I continue to take that actually daily. Uh, and I went to go get counseling and it's interesting what the counselor said. Uh, he said the interesting thing about anxiety is the more you think about it, the worse that it is. He said, when you feel it coming on, he said, I know this sounds counterintuitive and like obvious, an obvious answer, but he said, don't think about your anxiety when you're having anxiety. Because oftentimes it's like this spiral that happens where it's like it's it's rising up and you're like, oh shoot, it's happening. And you worry, 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 and then it just, you, you can't handle it, right? And um, so I went through that process. And um, that, that for several months, it was really bad. And then the, the medicine really helped, the counseling really helped. And that was like three years ago now, over three years ago now. Uh, oh no, about three years ago. And I would say ever since then, I still struggle with it. Before speaking on a Sunday, for example, before certain things that I do, I'll like sit there and take deep breaths and just try to like calm my, my heart rate down. And um, that's been probably the hardest thing that I've had to face personally uh, because it, it it was such, such a thing out of left field. Yeah. Yeah. I really appreciate you sharing that. And that's something I did actually hear you preach on that a while ago. And I think that sometimes in the church, we don't really talk about things like anxiety. It's a little bit of a taboo topic um, and there can be a lot of shame associated with it. And sometimes people feel the need to, to hide that, um, but you haven't done that. And I'm wondering, what was it like walking through that process for you as a pastor, as someone who a lot of people who are looking to um, and even that you were saying you don't even you didn't even know if you wanted to do this anymore. What was that like walking out uh, and figuring this out, um, being in leadership? Well, it was it wasn't easy in the sense of going through that. You know, your mind goes in some weird places, right? Like I thought, can I be a pastor anymore? Can I stand up in front of people and and talk? <laughs> um, <clears throat> and I wasn't sure if I if I was going to be able to. But luckily at the time, I've, looking back, I realized God placed specific people in my life. I was actually taking my master's at the time. And during the program, they, they, they have a, a specific mentor that you meet with every month. And so I met with the same mentor, mentor every month for over two years. And so having him in my life, Jeremy, his name was, or his name is, um, and being able to share in depth and having that, being able to have an open conversation and at that time, I was in actually in this small group that I, I, I briefly mentioned, and it was this small group that I felt like I was able to kind of share and get it off my chest. And so that really helped, just processing with people. But when it comes to that kind of stuff in your mind, I mean, it's just, it's just such a difficult thing to deal with. Honestly, if the medicine didn't work and if the counseling didn't work, and, I, and when I say work, it, it's not perfect, and if it didn't help, I don't know. I don't know what I'd be doing right now, to be honest with you. Yeah. So it sounds like to me, just hearing you, that people played a really big role in walking that through, through your mentor and your small group. And if there is someone who is watching today who is facing a similar situation, maybe, maybe walking through a, some anxiety, what would one piece of advice that you would give to them? I think people understand. Um, there is, like you said, there. I think there's shame attached to it. Um, and worry attached to it, but people get it. And uh, first of all, you know, talk to people about it. Talk to a counselor. Uh, talk to your friends. Be open about it. 
Um, that's what I've tried to do. And I'm not open in every setting, but you know, the, you gotta pick and choose. And honestly, uh, go see a doctor, get get medication, see what they prescribe. Uh, because honestly, it's been a it's been a life changer for me. And, and I'm, I'm actually, I wasn't able to function like a normal human being in those, especially those first four months. And it really helped ease my mind um, and, and ease literally my anxiety as well, which is, which has really been a, a blessing. Well, Pastor Lewis, thank you so much for being here with us today. Thank you so much for having me. I, I really do appreciate it. And we appreciate you. We love having you here as our associate pastor. You do so much for us and we're really just so grateful for you. Thank you everyone for joining us on another episode of Unscripted and we will see you next time.